you know? He's so quiet and so like subtle demeanor, you know, but he's like really, really good fabricator and really, really open to like input and suggestions and he wants it, you know, he wants to do the best job possible and like, you know, he's gonna be one of the best, I feel, one day. I love Magic, man. He's like such a like bright, shining, like he just like wants to learn everything and the fact that he made that little flat fender piece on his own to practice, you know, it's like he's thinking and he's reading and he's looking at everything and like Magic's getting there, he's really good, he's, he's getting broad, you know, and he's not just fabrication, you know, he's like motors and trans and doing blacksmith work and he just kind of wants to try it all. I think I need to spend way more time with him and, you know, try to teach him and, and give him everything I have, you know. Almost looks right on already. You can tell I've done that before, how I nailed the gap and radius like per, just by eyeballing it by how much what affects that is by how much I step it and pull it down as I step it because I'm like basically making it an octagon shape because I go deep and bink and then pull it out a half a stroke and then more half a stroke more half a stroke more so that octagon shape is what determines this radius we'll come in tomorrow and we'll bead that or maybe we'll do it out at the house where it's cooler. Okay. We'll beat it and then uh, do the wire edge and then should be good to go. Um, I was driving my 71 440 Cuda. Now that I'm here in Texas with all these country roads, man, it's better to have a big block Mopar with the five-speed. Wow. People want to apprentice. Well, I get like written letters, emails, Facebook, MySpace, Twitter, every possible way that people can get to me and want to like come and have me teach them stuff. You know, the, the only way to see the real value in my skills is to give them away. I get to work and like, realize what I know how to do and show people. I want to see this trade thrive and go back to the 40s where, you know, craftsmanship and pride and hand making something had a value. You know, and I think it's all about this. It's your hands and using your hands and giving yourself a sense of self pride. It feels good to do it as fast as I do it, you know, and like it gives me an opportunity to like realize I guess how, how skilled I am and how lucky I am to have the skills I have. I'm not the greatest metal worker in the world because I'm still learning and I'll, I'll keep learning and keep trying new things till the day I die and so hopefully I can keep passing that on. Just wondering, but you think you could do that on a piece that's connected? Like if this was just one fender? Just like uh, one? Well, we wouldn't be able to get it in the machine because it wouldn't, it wouldn't oh, yeah, feed no. through here. So. That's why it's good to cut it. It's cutting in half gives you good like opportunity to like detail stuff, you know. I did that mostly just to clean it. So to clean that edge before we weld it. You know where you get the stuff to like hold chemicals, right? beauty supply store because yeah. women put all kinds of crazy <laughs> in their hair <laughs> that's the only thing that'll hold up to like acetone and lacquer thinner yeah just make sure you're clean and make sure you take that when they kiln this stuff you know when they it has like a, a finish on it that doesn't weld like to weld through so you got to make sure you take like coarse scotch bride and go through that get that finish off of it is there a reason why you like, take welding as opposed to other kind of welding? Uh, well, it's, it's pretty much the standard deal. You know, we could gas weld it, but something like this that isn't super hypercritical of leaking and we don't have to do any shaping. You know, gas welding's good if you have to do some shaping after the fact and it has to stay malleable. This can be stiff and strong as we want it. And, <laughs> 